So today we have uh, an exciting topic to, to, to talk about. Um, maybe as a, as a way of intro, um, I wanted to touch on the importance of attracting and retaining top international talent um, in the pursuit of creating a strong ecosystem. Uh, this is something that uh, you know we've seen many, many times happening in the strongest ecosystems in the world. Definitely Sil Silicon Valley is one of the big examples where they managed to attract uh, people uh, from everywhere in the world and then integrate them in the community. Uh, and, and, and that's kind of one of the biggest engines of, of growth of, of the community. Something similar that I've, I've seen myself in London, a city where I spent seven years before I moved back to Barcelona to start Zero Eleven Age. And with that in mind, uh, we thought that it would be great to show you uh, the amazing top talent that we are managing to attract to Barcelona. And, and that sometimes uh, is not fully known, right? Uh, I think in the preparation of the, of, the, of the conference, I was talking to the organizers and I, I was like, look, there, there's like some really amazing entrepreneurs that are in the city and I, I believe that people are not even aware of it, right? So, um, so today we're gonna be showing, show, showing the, showcasing some of that talent that is arriving here and then we're going to have a, a, an open discussion about how we can do that even better. So maybe we'll start with uh, an introduction. Um, maybe you guys can spend like five minutes telling more about your personal story, your background, and perhaps uh, what took you to Barcelona uh, and what, what is that you're doing here. Great. Let's go. So um, <clears throat> I'm a French American. I, I grew up in London. And I went to uh, Stanford University. I got a BA in economics, and then I did an MBA at Columbia. Um, I was part of the leadership expansion team of Airbnb back in 2012. This was when the company was only 200 employees, um, and we were expanding outside of the United States. My mandate was to expand in Brazil. So it was all about growing operations and growing the business um, in Brazil at the time. And then I did that across Latin America, opening up um, Argentina, Mexico, Cuba, and all the other countries in Latin America at the time. We did this for both the homes business and the experiences business. And then I was tasked to head a global growth team here in Barcelona um, to help underperforming markets across the globe perform better um, for Airbnb. That was uh, my, my time here, and that's how I came to Barcelona in 2018. I left Airbnb at 2019 to uh, found uh, Ukio, which is, has a mission of basically empowering people to live where they want, when they want, by having a network of furnished apartments that are available for monthly stays uh, across Western Europe, and that's tech-enabled from search all the way to checkout. And so that's a little bit about my background. Amazing. Stan, and if I might ask, why did you decide to, to, to stay in Barcelona? I know you were here already, yep. so that's a good starting point. Yes, definitely. <laughs> but why, why, why is it that you decided to start the company and launch the company here? Yep, um, that's a great question. So in reality, Barcelona has a, a great lifestyle. I think that everybody can agree that the quality of life here is really exceptional, and I think it's something that makes Barcelona extremely unique. Um, you know, you have access, obviously, to the water, to, to, to mountains. You're very centrally located in Europe. And also, um, um, the cost of living is, is relatively lower than other parts of, of Europe or the United States. And um, <clears throat> that was one of the big drivers for, for, for us to stay here. Uh, my wife did not want to leave. Um, so we, uh, we really wanted to, to build a base here um, for, for us. Also, I uh, knew that having built a, a big team uh, for Airbnb that was centrally located, but helping markets across the globe. I knew that it was a great hub to one, attract talent um, because of the, of, of the quality of life that, that, it, that it provides. And also it was a place that had relatively low upfront uh, startup costs, which was a big driver for us to build a business in uh, Barcelona, where we could have a hub and spoke model where the majority of our operations will be centrally located in Barcelona as we expand into other markets. Amazing, great. Uh, Sasha, sure. yeah, I would yeah. love to hear your story. <laughs> I know some of the background, we know each other for some years. Uh, but yeah, uh, sure. we'd love to hear your story. So, I was born in Perpignan, <laughs> which is a start and has some relation, of course, with Barcelona. And I grew up in Catalonia del Norte, we can say maybe. 
And then I went on to work in Paris, in New York, and, uh, and uh, I worked uh, with Arthur Anderson, which was a famous audit firm which disappeared. Then I spent some years with McKinsey, the consulting firm. And then I founded Jumia together with a friend from McKinsey, which is, which is an e-commerce company in Africa, which is present you know, in 11 markets. And we are now more than 4,000 employees. We're listed on the stock exchange in New York. I'm sure maybe we'll have some question about it. And so my wife is working also, and we lived uh, in Washington, D.C. for many years. We lived in Dubai. So we had lived in many places, and we have three kids who are now 12, 10, and 9, right? And we thought it was great to have done all that. We thought it was great to have traveled and lived in many cities. And after Dubai, which we didn't really like, we thought now it's time to settle. It's time to plant some roots. It's time to move into a city where we can commit to spending 20 years, right? So we loved living in all those great cities, Paris, New York, Washington, Dubai. But now we want to settle. And so we thought very hard, where can we settle? And we came to a short list of three cities, <laughs> New York, Geneva, and Barcelona, where we thought in those cities we can have very international cities with great, of course, opportunities to connect with, you know, culture, great people, work, you know, all those criteria that you're looking for. And uh, came down to Barcelona because for us, this was a bit like coming back to our roots, you know, yeah. back to the Perpignan <laughs> and giving our kids also the real values that we know and uh, make them grow into, into people that we know. And so we came with, to Barcelona with the real you know, will to stay here for the long term and to also contribute to Barcelona. This is something I've been saying to Barcelona Tech City and to Axio also that I met. I said, I come here also to contribute. And I, I've been asking, how can I contribute? And they said, the first thing you need to do is just tell your story. <laughs> <laughs> just right. make sure that the world knows that you're here and, and try to inspire by just doing that, you know. So, Last week, we, re we released our results, and so I did some interviews on CNN, and there's like, you know, location, Barcelona. <laughs> People say, okay, that's already Great something. Answer. But m more uh, seriously, I'm very committed to, to making the city, you know, success and uh, bring whatever contribution I can. So very excited to be brainstorming about how can we do that. Amazing. And, and can you perhaps share a bit the the setup that you do, you have and how is that affecting you know your work etc i mean you you guys are based here have all of the team here etc but you have a very different setting right like you're running a company that is based in africa yeah <laughs> uh, so maybe you can talk a little bit more on that and wh what is that you do here versus versus there how you combine all these things of course so we're present in 11 countries in africa where we have like i said several thousands of employees and you guys understand e-commerce. You can imagine we have like warehouses, offices, marketing, finance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then outside Africa, we have a tech center in Porto, in Portugal, very close to here. We have our legal HQ in Berlin. We have a quite a sizable office in China, where we have a cross-border program. We have a hub office in Dubai, and we have offices in New York, where we are listed. So we have all those offices, and we are, I think. I want to say a modern company, which is very centralized from an operational perspective, but we don't have a real HQ. Mm -hmm. So in Barcelona, for now, there's me, <laughs> and there's a Jumia Technologies SL, and I recently hired a resource from Esade to mm -hmm. pilot a cross-border program where we want to help Spanish companies sell directly to Africa. So I see, for, for me, Barcelona right now is a personal choice. Let's be clear about that, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. It's a personal choice. But I think there's merit in having an office here. I think more and more people want to work remotely. Like, I think your company is successful because of that to some extent. And uh, more and more people also in Jumia, they say, oh, maybe I can also move to Barcelona, right? And I can do my job from Barcelona. And we have a lot of people. We have 300 people in Porto. Some people will end up here. So for me, it's more personal choice. But I really believe that with time, we'll build some, some some talent and some skills and some functions here in Barcelona uh, for the cross-border program. I want to really establish Barcelona as the hub for European cross-border to Africa. Mm -hmm. And then inevitably, we'll have some talented tech people, some talented marketing people who say, 
I'm tired of Porto, I want to live in Barcelona. I'm tired of Dubai, I want to live in Barcelona. This will happen sooner or later. Great. Well, great story, and I, I think very good different examples, right, of uh, <laughs> on how to, to be set up here. And, and the, the other topic I wanted to touch on is, you know, how, how's your experience been, right? Uh, and, you know, directly for you, uh, and, and maybe more perhaps on if you think about uh, other entrepreneurs coming and setting up roots here, setting up companies here. What's been the, 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 the good and the ugly, right? Um, how, how do you guys see? Uh, what, what things went well, didn't go so well, perhaps? And being super frank, because I think the, 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 the point of having this is to have an open discussion that we can then find good solutions for. Right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think the, the things that have really been going well is you can feel that Barcelona is becoming much more of a, of a tech center in, in Europe. You can feel that there's a lot of people talking about Barcelona as growing hub, growing tech hub, and I think that that's something that you can feel when you, when you arrive, and that's something that we should really try to continuously develop, which was what you're saying, Sasha, to kind of contribute back to, to Barcelona. And I think that, that you can see that also with a lot of new companies that are emerging and getting a lot of funding. Obviously, Travel Perk was one of them. Um, Factorial uh, has been the recent one. And, and a, lot of, a lot of really emerging great companies coming out of Barcelona. So that's something that's been really, really great. I mean, you feel very, um, you feel accepted and you feel very welcomed when you are want to build and you want to be an entrepreneur. So I think that that's been a very, very positive, very positive thing um, as well. I think also naturally the city um, is a place where it, it's easy to uh, attract talent, tell people. I mean, as you mentioned with Porto, you know, I'm sure that people can come and, and, and want to come to live in Barcelona. So I don't think that when you want to convince an executive that you want to hire to bring to come to Barcelona, I think it's a it's, it's a pretty easy sell. I think the 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 second thing that I've seen is that um, you you it's it's a city that doesn't require the same you know investments to actually get a, a business running, right? So I think that the one thing that was a, a really big plus for us is um, we could start really building a business um, with, with lower costs. And I think that that's a very big, big, a, a, a very attractive thing about, about Barcelona in comparison to other parts of Europe. And, and obviously in the United States, San Francisco doesn't even compare, <laughs> obviously. So, um, but, um, but I think that, that's, that that was a big, big, uh, big plus um, also. And, I, and naturally, we, we work more in the hospitality space. So uh, for us, it's always been a big center for a lot of talent and hospitality and hotels and in, and in travel. So it actually has been quite, uh, we've been very impressed by the talent that we've been able to, um, to hire for, for our business um, in Barcelona in, in, that, in that segment. So that's really kind of what I would consider the, 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 great, the great aspects, obviously, in the lifestyles we mentioned already um, is it, very hard to, 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 to beat. Um, I think the, 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 the places where we can, in, we can find some improvement um, in, in, in Barcelona is I feel um, that there's, there's three main areas that I think we should really try to work on. I, I lived in, in, in Sao Paulo um, when, uh, when I was building Airbnb across Latin America, and the one thing that you noticed being in, an, in a tech startup was that the community was very close. Everyone knew each other. Um, all of the founders... Um, you were immediately uh, put into a, a WhatsApp conversation, a group, an email, um, a thread, and, 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 and people were extremely welcoming and, and were always inviting you to events, and, and you always knew everybody in the system. And, and I think that the one thing I think that we could really try to develop a little bit more, and I think all of us can contribute to this, is really trying to get people to know each other um, more, um, spending more time together. I think we're all here to help each other out, make Barcelona a even more of a successful tech hub. Um, and I think that that's something that we should try to, to foster um, further. I think the, the, the second thing I would say is, and I think Lisbon is really kind of paving the way of this, is I think that we should try to find ways to incentivize more and more tech companies to come to, to Barcelona, either through tax rebates or more incentives. I don't know what it could be, but I think Lisbon has done a very strong job, and I think it's a great example of a, of a, of a, of a city that has done a really, really good job in kind of bringing, um, bringing more startups into, into the city. And so I think we should kind of mirror ourselves on what they're doing a little bit to, to, to continuously uh, bring, bring new startups over here. Um, I think the last one was, that has been a little bit difficult for us is, is really um, hiring 
devs. Uh, we find, we're, we're hiring a, a tech team right now, and, and naturally, um, it, we're, we're already actually just assuming that they're going to be remote um, because it's been very, um, there's more limited amount of talent in, in, in tech in the, in the dev space in, in, in Barcelona, so I think that's something we could, we could also help. help. And in, on that point, is it mostly because, um, I mean, hiring devs is so hard everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just to make sure we, yeah, we understand it better, is it mostly around uh, the number of devs or the type of experience they have? I mean, if you compare it to maybe London or, 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 or France, uh, where, where, where are you finding the, 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 the difficulty? I think it's more. In, I think that's the, the, the number. Obviously, naturally, I think it's uh, the the the. I would say also the uh, their the the talent pool is a little bit more limited. Um, I think that also naturally, I think in, in a lot of ways they they're happy to be remote. I think they like to, to work a little bit more remotely. So we would have liked to have them a little bit more centrally with us in Barcelona. But um, that's one thing I think that we could try to to foster further. Amazing. Well, great. Great. Maybe to add on to that and share some, some thoughts and impressions, I think the, I mean, A, of course, Barcelona for me is one of the most attractive cities in the world for many, many, many reasons. I think what's striking is I feel a lot of people who are here actually want to contribute. And I think that's amazing. Like a lot of entrepreneurs want to be successful for themselves, but they care also about paving the way and thinking, how can I contribute? And I think that is very deep and very uh, very strong and it's amazing because at the end of the day there's this will which is genuinely there and I think is very sincere from from a lot of people and that energy you feel it way more for example than I felt it in other cities where people say I want to be successful but for more for myself but here there's a, a greater sense of purpose I think to make Barcelona successful and I, I feel that very strongly the two observations which are more negative, which I feel we, we can change. One is around the, the, the politics, and I know you said don't bring politics, but I'm actually going to take it out, because <laughs> it I think up. a lot of people here, a lot of people here said, yes, but there's the politics. And I keep saying, guys, like, there's the Brexit. In the US, I can tell you I was there when Trump was elected. There's always bullshit politics going on, and I think it's okay, you know? I think a lot of people like, uh, like us, outsiders, we don't see that and it doesn't really matter to us. So I'm, I'm sure that of course it matters to the people who are here in the long term and it's very unfortunate because they feel it could be better without some of that and probably, probably it's true or at least they feel that. But it's not an obstacle, that's what I want to say. I think for me there's political problems everywhere in the world, you know, at some point in time and it's for me it's not something that is an obstacle. Mm -hmm and uh, something that should not make us pessimistic. That's my view. The second one is I think we need to do a better job at marketing the successes, which is, I think, great that you do this event and that we bring the local heroes, as you call them, from, from Wallbox and so on and so forth, and, hey, and that we show that I have a lot of friends who live in other parts of the world and they say, I would love to move to Barcelona, but where can I work? what successes are there and now they can say oh but yeah I heard this company was there I heard this you know Airbnb had their whatever center there I heard that there's this new company would get listed and so on and so forth and we need to promote that because a lot of people think as Barcelona as a great lifestyle but lacking opportunities and so I think we need to correct that and every little success that we have we need to make the best uh, return on investment so that the outside words hear about it so that they can think about it. And they hear a lot of successes that, okay, Paris, London, and so on and so forth, and we need to make the best of everything we can so that they hear that. And uh, that is uh, something that will reassure people to move to Barcelona. Great, and connecting with that, like I wanted to welcome Roger. Uh, maybe you can say a couple of words about your background, what took you here, and kind of what, what are the joys that you're finding, and also the, the challenges you're finding being here in Barcelona. Great, thank you everyone, and sorry I'm a little bit late. <laughs> um, it's an honor to be on the panel. Um, so just a quick background, I'm American. Uh, I uh, started a company in Singapore called Redmart. Uh, we built it to about 2,500 2, employees, raised over 100 million, um, and uh, got to about 400 million in revenue and sold it to Alibaba in November 2016. Um, we were sort of 
one of the big first startups in Singapore before the ecosystem had developed. So there were only two VCs in Singapore, not much capital. We had to scrape by, um, you know, over 70 people on our cap table, uh, just doing what we had to do uh, to survive. Um, and so, see the similarities in the developing ecosystem here in Barcelona. Um, as a foreigner, when I came here, uh, probably more about lifestyle after a 10-year grind and uh, selling the company, I wanted to take a bit of a break. But as an entrepreneur, I couldn't help myself uh, getting into something new. Um, so I'm now working on, I would guess you would call it an ed tech startup called Nurture. Uh, we help parents teach their kids life skills uh, through fun bonding activities. Skills such as creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, financial literacy, uh, all the non-academic skills that you won't learn in school, uh, but are important for leading a fulfilling life. Um, so I'm the only one on my team here in Barcelona. Um, some of the things I've noticed, uh, you know, it's easy to, when I'm talking to potential employees, to attract them to Barcelona. Uh, lifestyle is, is very good. Um, but some of the complications I've run into, um, number one is finding, you know, places to live, I think was the first one. Um, we looked on Idealista, there's not that much available, um, you know, especially if you want to live closer to schools. Uh, second, I would say the schools, um, there's great schools here, um, but there's not that many spots. Uh, so we were fortunate to get one of those spots, but I imagine as the ecosystem develops, it's going to get harder and harder, so hopefully schools, uh, that's a nice startup opportunity right there. <laughs> um, and uh, then, um, you know, some of the taxation issues, uh, I, maybe we've spoken about that before. Not yet. You're the first, but I'm sure that it's in everyone's uh, mind. <laughs> Sorry to unload. There's also a lot of great things. Let me get to those afterwards. Um, so, you know, uh, the treatment of options, stock options here, uh, as you may know, is treated as income uh, rather than capital gains. Um, so where it could be 20 to 25 percent tax rate, it's more like 40, 50 percent depending on your income level. Uh, so that's obviously not that attractive. Um, it doesn't apply to founder's equity, which, uh, which is interesting, but still, you know, every startup's gonna have a stock option plan and that's, going not, that's not gonna be that attractive and hopefully, I know there's people working on that. Um, Talent-wise, uh, I think there's tons of talent here. Um, I think, you know, there hasn't been that many startups uh, that there's been a few that have made it big and, and they're starting to find opportunities, but a lot of the talent goes elsewhere. Um, but I think if there are some great opportunities here, they would stay uh, and, and work on the startups here. And one similar, I, I overheard the last things you said, a similar constraint we felt in Singapore is making it a, you know, it's seen in society as a good opportunity to work at a startup. Um, when I was in Singapore, uh, every Singaporean parents wanted their kids to work at, you know, uh, McKinsey and Goldman Sachs. They sort of view startup as way too risky and not a great opportunity for their kids. And I can't tell you how many conversations I had with parents, you know, when I'm recruiting their kids, I had to tell them why this is like a real company and it's not, we're not just uh, messing around here, it's serious. Um, and, you know, had to convince them slowly. And as the ecosystem developed, the government put a lot of effort towards, um, towards you know, making people realize that this is a great opportunity for young people. Um, so that's just... I thank you, Roger. So I think like we have around like five minutes and I wanted to keep a couple of minutes for questions. So maybe I'll ask you to, to say, if we're gonna focus in the coming, let's say year, two years, and we're entrepreneurs, we take things on our own hand. Uh, what are the one or two things that you would do to strengthen the, 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 the system here? Uh, I think there were some good ideas already. Um, and where were, we, uh, where, where were we gonna start, right? I, I thought like w one of the things is like, uh, gladly we, we had some connection, personal connection or work connection before. And one of the things I'm trying is to basically foster, uh, what Stanley was saying, like trying to get some more people together so we can see each other more often, et cetera, and then start sharing experiences, sharing contacts, open the network and really build that community. What do you guys think that uh, we could do in the next year to start you know, kicking butt. <laughs> I would do a fund 
to do seeds for like very tech-oriented projects, more around the engineering side with Universitat de Catalunya, de Politecnica, and no sé qué. Yeah. But I think here there's a lot of like travel, you know, and so on and so forth. But we need like outcore scientific projects for like green and um, things like that. So I would I would do that. Amazing. I would say um, people like us need to be mentors. Um, when we were starting off in Singapore, uh, there was one generation of startups, probably the first one, uh, some founders from Property Guru, who served as angels. And it wasn't that much about the money. Uh, you know, they put in a relatively small amount of money just to help get us started and believe in us. But it was more about the mentorship um, and helping those young startups and founders navigate through all the mistakes we've made, right? <laughs> um, helping them avoid all that pain uh, and, and really investing our time more than, more than our money. Yeah. I, I also think we could um, really try to bring more of the investor ecosystem from Silicon Valley into, Bar into Barcelona. I think that there's a lack of American VCs coming to Barcelona to look for opportunity, and I think that's something that we could really start to try to foster a little bit more through our, our network and our contacts. Great. And the, the other thing I would ask you is to use your strong reputation name, etc., to definitely put Barcelona mm -hmm. on the map. So I know that Sasha started with you guys and us, everyone, we need to start doing more of that. <laughs> uh, because I think that that would definitely start triggering a lot of other people noticing that we're on the map and that they, it's, it's a great opportunity to be here. So yeah, with this, I would like to open it to the floor, uh, see if there's any, any questions. Um, we'd love to, to answer them. Miguel Valls from Alta. Thank you very much for a great panel. My question would be for, for Sasha. Um, uh, I think that uh, you, know, you are kind of visionary being in Barcelona and uh, kind of operating in Africa. I think that here in Barcelona, uh, for us, Africa is a big unknown, except maybe Morocco and Algeria, Tunisia, we know, but really doing tech business down more in the south of Africa. So can you give us a little bit of enlightenment about, about the ecosystem there and, and how you think that, that we could improve mm -hmm. the access. Because Barcelona is the biggest metropolitan city, you know, closest to Africa. And, and we really don't take advantage of that. Thank you. It's a very good question. And I think the, if you think about the, the relationship at the very big picture between the European Union and Africa, it's a, one of the biggest, uh, you know, biggest issue or opportunity in the next decades for Europe and Europe needs to take care of that uh, of Africa in a way that creates I think great opportunities for Africa and for Europe and Barcelona I think is very well positioned for that because France had the you know is tainted when it comes to Africa and uh, and Barcelona being on the Mediterranean coast and being very close geographically to Africa and in a way neutral to the to the opportunity or to the to the problem is I think a great opportunity. And uh, Barcelona can position, I think, itself as, as the, the leading city from the European Union perspective to create those bridges and to create this new policy towards Africa, I think. And this is a big, I think, opportunity for the city as well in the decades to come. And tech is, is a revolution which is transforming Africa to a way that we cannot begin to imagine, right? In Africa, you have 1.2 billion people today, 2 billion people, you know, in 20 years. And the infrastructures of uh, physical assets, retail, ro roads, hospitals, will never develop the way they developed in Europe because it's just taking too much time and technology is revolutionizing that. If you think about medical, if you think about education, if you think about uh, financial services, you've got the most amazing opportunity to transform and to deliver all those services to billions of people. And so I think we're still in the very, very, very early days. You know, very, very early days. Today there's not much investments which is going there because the ecosystem is just starting, basically. And I think that it will go exponential. And the people who are ideally positioning themselves and at the right time of the curve will, will completely transform the continent. So part of also what we can do, I think, is to 
is to embrace that. And if you think about the point of that European Union and Africa, we need Africa to, to be successful. We need Africa to develop and to be stable because it's geopolitically a necessity anyway. And we turn that necessity to a huge opportunity for, for, for Africa to accelerate its development and for the European Union to, to benefit from that opportunity. So I think lots to impact. This will be almost for our kids. But, uh, but if you think about all the things that we do, they will never happen the same way in Africa. And I think that's very exciting. Uh, they're telling me that we're out of time. So, well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys, for, for showing up. And, yeah, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.